Hello everyone, thanks for stopping in. Today we're going to be talking about section 5.1 for Math 100. Since these videos are going to be released the week before Halloween, I thought I would make things a little more fun, and I am dressed up as a low-budget minion from the movie Despicable Me. But, let's get started. We want to write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 in exponential form and evaluate. This whole chapter is going to be talking about different exponent rules. So let's see, since 2 occurs as a factor 6 times, the base is 2, and the exponent is 6. We probably already knew that, but hopefully we know the exponent expression is 2 to the 6th, or simply 2 to the 6th power, or 2 to the 6th. Lots of different ways we express this phrase here. Remember, 2 to the 6th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and times 2. Now here, let's look at this. We have 2 to the 4th, negative 2 to the 4th, and parentheses negative 2 to the 4th. So first, let's name the base and exponent um, as we evaluate. So let's see, evaluate. So we need to copy 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Let's see. 2 times 2, let's see, we can use our calculator, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Just make sure you're careful, you're typing in the right number of times. Gives us 16. I like to hold up fingers to help me keep track. 2 times 2 is 4, times 8, and then 16, right? So evaluating gives me 16, and now let's see. We want to know what the base was and what the exponent was. And so the base here was 2, and the exponent was 4, right? In our next example, and our third example, they're similar but different. In the second example, we'll write the negative sign, but then we only repeat the number 2 the 4 times. We don't repeat the negative sign. And so this one will be negative 16, right? Because negative 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 would be negative 16. Here, the base is still 2, but the exponent is 4. The only difference is I put a negative sign out front. Now, in the third example, I'll be repeating negative 2 times negative 2, times negative 2, times negative 2, four times, because the negative is inside the parentheses. Here, negative times a negative is positive, times a negative is negative, times a negative is a... So it's going to be positive in the end, right? Four copies of a negative sign will give me a positive number, and 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 gives me 16, so it'll be positive 16. Notice I got different answers for steps 2 and 3. Now, here... The base is negative 2. This example is slightly different. And the exponent is 4 still. So notice the differences. Whether you repeat the negative sign or not depends on whether the negative sign is inside or outside parentheses. So let's look at this one. We've got these two expressions. Now, for the bases, which one is positive A and which one should I make negative A? Well, in the first one, the negative sign is not part of the base. But in the second one, it is. So we want to make sure we notice that this one here, with the parentheses, the base is actually the negative a. So make sure you, you notice that. The bases are different, right? We need to add the negative here, but not here. In both of them, the exponent is n. We can keep that. For an example, maybe we have negative 2 to the third which would be negative 2 times 2 times 2 versus negative 2 to the third, which would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Notice the differences. Make sure you're aware of those differences. They are not the same. One has parentheses and one doesn't, so they are different. It can be easy to forget this difference. Make sure if a negative sign is not inside the parentheses, you do not repeat it. Now, we're going to introduce our first new rule for exponents, and this one is called the product rule. 
for a positive and for any positive integers m and n we have a to the m times a to the n notice a is the same the answer here can be rewritten as a to the m plus n you add the exponents and keep the same base. We keep the same base and add the exponents. An example, 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th should be equal to 5 to the 3 plus 4 is 7. Notice I keep the base the same. Now I wrote this out for a specific reason because 5 to the 3rd is 5 times 5 times 5. This part right here is from 5 to the third and I wanted to multiply that by 5 to the fourth which is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 and those four would be 5 to the fourth right notice there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it'll be 5 to the seventh now, you can't always write it out like this. What if this was 5 to the 307 times 5 to the 492? You wouldn't want to write out that many 5s. That's where we have this rule. It allows us to quickly combine things with the same base and add the exponents. Notice they have to have the same base, though. They have to have the same base. And then we have a caution. Do not multiply the bases when using the product rule. Keep the same base and add the exponents. This isn't 25 to the 7th. It's 5 to the 7th. The base does not change. So let's do a bunch of examples. Let's take a look here. 7 to the 5th times 7 to the 8th. Well, the base will stay the same. 5 plus 8 is 13. So it'll be 7 to the 13th. In this example, notice negative 2 is the base, so I'll keep negative 2 as the base, and 4 and 5 combine to give me 9. In my third example, what exponent is hiding on this y? It's secretly a 1, right? If there's no exponent, it's secretly a 1, right? So this would be y to the 1 plus 5 is 6. n squared times n to the 4 will be n to the 6, because 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 squared times 2 squared. These are different bases. I cannot combine these into one answer. If I want to simplify this, I have to use good old-fashioned order of operations. I have to do 3 squared and 2 squared first, because those are exponents. 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. The only way to simplify this is by combining by order of operations. There's no exponential rule shortcut for different bases. They have to have the same base. So if I make 3 squared 9 and 2 squared 4, 9 times 4 would be 36. If I want to simplify that one, it's a good old-fashioned order of operations. Same thing here. This is plus. The rule is the product rule. It's not the addition rule, it's the product rule. This is not going to be equal to 2 to the 5th. Addition and exponents do not play nice together. They do not play nice together. This would be equal to 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2 plus 2 squared is 2 times 2. Notice I got to multiply. I got to do the exponents first, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 plus 2 times 2 is 4, right? This gives me 4, this gives me 8, and then I can add them to get 12. Addition does not play nicely with exponent rules. Neither does subtraction, right? Because addition and subtraction are the same type of operation. So keep that in mind. How about this one? 5y cubed times 4y to the 6. Well, 5y cubed is really 5 times y cubed, right? And then times, let's see, 4y to the 6 is 4 times y to the 6. Remember, when everything is multiplication, you can multiply in any order you so choose. So I'm going to put the y's next to each other and the constants next to each other. Multiplication is in any order, right? That's the commutative property. 5 times 4 is 20. And y to the 3rd times y to the 6 would simplify to y to the 9. Notice 5 times 4 is 20. y to the 3rd, y to the 6 gives me y to the 9. Usually we don't write this 
rearranging step out. We just know we multiply the constants and we multiply the y's. We usually do this mentally. We don't usually write it out law and form like this. Usually we go straight from here to our answer. 5 times 4 is 20. y cubed, y to the 6 is y to the 9. Now be careful. Make sure you know the difference between adding and multiplying exponential expressions. Look, 7k squared plus 3k squared. Addition is when you see if things are like terms. k squared and k squared are like terms. So this one would be 10k squared, right? It's adding. We've already been doing that. That is not new. That is combining like terms. But... 7k squared times 3k squared would be 7 times 3 is 21. k squared and k squared, I will add the 2 and the 2 together to make it 4, right? Just like in the example above. When you're multiplying, you add the exponents on the variable. Make sure you keep that in mind. Adding and multiplying are completely different when you have variables with exponents. Adding, you're looking to combine like terms. Multiplying, you're using these exponential rules. So that was our first rule, the power rule. Or sorry, the product rule. Our next rule is the power rule. And it says power rule A because there's going to be more than one power rule. The first one says if I have two positive exponents, M and N, A to the M, parentheses to the N, is equal to the A to the m times n. I multiply the exponents. I always like to think of this as the powers to powers rule. Raise a power to a power by multiplying exponents. You got powers to powers. Let's look at an example. 4 to the third, all squared, should be equal to 4 to the 6. Now, let's look. If I were to work this out long ways, it should give me the same thing. 4 cubed squared. Well, I'll work out inside the parentheses first. That's 4 times 4 times 4 inside the parentheses, right? 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. And I need to square that. Well, squaring tells me to take two copies of the same thing. 4 times 4 times 4. And then I have another copy of that. 4 times 4 times 4. Notice... In between here is multiplication, right? It's all multiplication. When everything is multiplication, you don't need parentheses, right? Because there's only one operation, multiplication. It does not matter what order you multiply in when that's the only operation you have, right? How many fours do I have? Six. Four to the six. So I know the shortcut is correct. Once again, I'm not going to write it out every time. I'm going to use this rule to shortcut the work, especially if the numbers are bigger. You don't want to write out a ton of fours if, you know, it's four to the 56. You don't want to write 56 fours. You want to be able to use these shortcut rules. So let's do some examples. Let's see. Three to the two to the five will be three. Two times five is ten. That'll be three to the ten. 4 to the 8, all to the 6, will be 4 to the 48. Because 8 times 6 is 48. n to the 7, all to the 3rd, will be n to the 21. Because 3 times 7 is 21. And then 2 to the 5 to the 8, will be 2 to the 40. Because 5 times 8 is 40. 40. Notice we just have to multiply when we have powers to powers. That was our first power rule. Our second power rule is AB to the M. So you have two things that are being multiplied raised to a power. Well, you can actually distribute the exponent to the both of them. Exponents distribute over multiplication. So we raise a product to a power by raising each factor to the power. Here we have a product of A and B, A to the M, B to the M. Each factor has that same power. I like to think of this as distribution. It's the power distributing over multiplication. 
Now let's look. 5h cubed. Well, once again, I'm going to write the answer over here that this should be 5 cubed h cubed. Now, let's write out the in-between. 5h cubed tells me to repeat 5h three times. But, it's all multiplication. I have 5h times 5h times 5h, and 5h is 5 times h, right? It's 5 times h times 5 times h times 5 times h. So this is 5 times h times 5 times h times 5 times h, which notice 1, 2, 3, 5s, 1, 2, 3 h's, right? We can apply the rule here. Now let's do some more examples. 2 ABC to the 4. Everything's multiplication, so I'll distribute the 4 to all of them. I'll distribute the 4 to all of them. I'll place the 4 in all of them. That's using the power rule, right? I distribute the 4 to all of them. Now, in the next example, I need to be careful. This is 5xy cubed squared. The 5 is not affected by the 2 because it's outside the parentheses. So I'll leave the 5 alone. Now, I'm going to distribute the 2 to the x and the 2 to the y cubed. Putting the 2 on the x is easy. But what happens to the y? y cubed, and I'm applying a 2 to it. This is a power to a power. This is the same rule as up here. I have powers to powers, right? That's the power rule A. 3 and 2 multiply to give me 6. So y cubed to the 2 is y to the 6. Notice I left the 5 alone as well. In the next example, we have 7. That's going to be left alone, but the 3 will get distributed to the 2, the m, the n, and the p. I'm going to distribute this 3 to all of these. So I'll have 7, that's left alone, times 2 cubed m cubed. Let's see, n originally had a 5, and I'm raising it to the 3. Multiplying those will give me 15. And then p, same thing, 7 to the 3 is 21, right? powers to powers. Notice I had to use the power rule A and the power rule B on this problem. Now, since the front here is, you know, a little messy, you might want to clean up that numbers. Let's see, 2 cubed is 8, right? This will be 7 times 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And that would be m cubed n to the 15, p to the 21. 7 times 8, that's 56, right? 56 m cubed n to the 15, p to the 21. So... I simplified the numeric portion in the front, right? I could have done the same thing here. 2 to the 4th is 16. I could have written 16 a, 4, a to the 4, B to the 4, C to the 4, right? How about the next one? We need to be careful. Negative 3 to the 4. This is actually negative 1 times 3 to the 4. Remember, when the negative... For the 3 to the 4 portion, that 4 is not on the negative sign. So I'm going to write it separately. However, the 5 is affecting the negative sign because the negative is within the parentheses, right? Be careful. This is using the negative sign in both manners we saw on the front page, isn't it? The 4 is not applied to the negative, but the 5 is. Well, negative 1 will be to the fifth power, right? I'm going to leave the negative inside the parentheses because the 5 does affect the negative sign. And this will be times, let's see, 3 to the 4th to the 5th, because I'm distributing the 5 to both, will be 3 to the 20, right? 
3 to the 20. Now, negative 1 to the 5th. This is an odd amount of negative ones, isn't it? There's five copies of negative ones. Five copies of negative ones. Well, if I start pairing them off on my fingers, right, these will be positive, these will be positive, I'm going to have a negative left over, right? When you have an odd number of negatives, it's actually just negative 3 to the 20, right? This negative 1 to the 5th stays negative, right? So this negative 1 part was just to determine the sign of my 3 to the 20. Notice my base is 3, my exponent is 20, and the negative sign is floating out front. Make sure you're careful with negative signs. Negative signs throw a bit of a wrench into these types of problems. Now, it says caution. Power rule does not apply to a sum. 5y squared is equal to 5 squared y squared. That is true. That's one of the power rules, right? But 5 plus y squared is not, I repeat, is not equal to 5 plus y squared. This is not equal. Not equal. Not equal. Sums, addition, and subtraction do not play nicely with exponents. Whenever you see plus signs and exponents in the same problem, you should immediately be cautious because most likely there is no shortcut you can use to solve the problem. Here, I cannot shortcut this by distributing the exponent to both. They are not going to be the same thing. So be careful of that. It does not work on sums or subtractions. Plus and minus do not play nice with exponents. I cannot say it enough. Now, we have one more rule to take a look at, and this is the last power rule. Here, we have a divided by b all to the m, and once again, you can bring the m inside to both. So powers work nicely with multiplication and division, but not addition or subtraction. So let's take a look. 3 fourths squared will be 3 squared over 4 squared. And that's because 3 fourths squared would be 3 fourths times 3 fourths, right? That's how you square a number. You multiply it by itself. 3 times 3 in the top is 3 squared. 4 times 4 in the bottom is 4 squared. So, in my first example, 2 fifths to the fourth would be 2 to the 4 over 5 to the 4. The 4 would get applied to both. Similarly, x over y to the 7 would be x to the 7 over y to the 7. Because the 7 will be applied to both. And that's the last power rule. Now, we have a summary of rules here. I wrote most of them in for you, but I wanted us to at least copy one of them down. So I left the first power rule blank, the powers to powers. Let's fill that one in. Let's see. Powers to powers. Power rule A, A to the M to the N is A to the M times N, right? You multiply the powers to powers. And then product rule, remember, multiplying something with the same base, you add the powers. You can distribute it over multiplication, and you can distribute it over division. So let's take a look at some examples. Here, well, 3 fourths squared would be 3 squared over 4 squared. Notice I cleared my parentheses right away. And 3 fifths, I can put that over 1, right? 3 to the 5. That's not 3 fifths, it's 3 to the 5th. I missed some words there. 3 squared over 4 squared times 3 to the 5th, and I'll put it over 1 because it's fractions. Notice in the top I have 3 squared times 3 to the 5th. That's 3 to the 7, right? They have the same base, so I add the powers. That's this first rule, right? 4 squared times anything times 1 stays the same, so that'll just be 4 squared. So I've applied the exponents. Now, if the question asked me to actually evaluate it, I would, but I'm going to leave it in exponential form for the time being so we can see the exponential rules. Make sure on the homework you take note, does it want you to leave it in exponential form or does it want you to actually, you know, type in 3 to the 7th, right? 3 times 3, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7 would be 2187 if I did want to calculate it. Make sure you're aware on the homework, which is it asking you to do? Is it asking you to calculate or leave it in exponential form? My next example. Now there's two ways to think about this one. Notice I have parentheses I can distribute through, right? It's all multiplication. But what's true about this chunk and this chunk? They're the same. So I actually can rewrite that chunk because that's the base, right? My exponents were 3 and 8. Those add to 11. I'm using that first rule. Two things with the same base to different powers. You can add them, right? They have the same base. 7m squared n. 7m squared n. So I'll add the 3 and the 8. Now I'm going to distribute the 11. Notice I waited to distribute because I only have to distribute once now. 7 to the 11. m 2 and 11, this is power rule A, right? M and N. 2 times 11 would be 22, and then N will be to the 11th power. So my problem simplifies to 7 to the 11, M to the 22, and N to the 11. Now, I cannot do the same thing here, can I? I cannot use that same trick. These are not the same base. So here, I must distribute first. And I must distribute first. I need to clear those parentheses out. They are not the same base, so I need to be careful with that. Let's see. 2 to the 6 times x to the 18 times y to the 6. And remember, that's multiplication between the parentheses, right? It'll be 2 to the 10. Let's see, x to the 7 to the 10 would be, oh goodness, x to the 70. I definitely wouldn't be able to write out all the different x's here, would I? There's way too many. And then y to the 4 to the 10 would be y to the 40. Now, notice I'm multiplying everything, so I can multiply the factors that have the same base. This will be 2, remember when they have the same base, you add to the 16. For x, I'll get 88, right? It'll be x to the 88. And then for the y, y to the 6 and y to the 40 will be y to the 46, right? You add the powers. So here, I had to distribute and then combine the factors that had the same base. Remember, that's two different rules, right? Actually, three. I'm using the power rules to distribute, right? That's power rule B. I'm using the power rule A to combine my exponents, and I'm using the product rule to combine things with the same base. Sometimes it takes multiple different rules to combine things. Now, our last example, all negative signs. I'm going to immediately rewrite my whole problem. I'm going to make sure that that negative 1 is separated from that G cubed, squared, and then here, same thing, right? I've got negative 1, g squared, h to the 5. Remember, this 3 does not affect the negative sign. It's separate. Same with this 2. But these big ones on the outside of my parentheses, oops, I forgot this one, this 2 does affect that negative. Because now when I go to distribute, this 2 will go to the negative 1, the 3, and the h. And this 3 will go to the negative 1, the g squared, and the h to the 5th. So let's write it out. Let's see. We have negative 1 to the 2. g to the 3 times 2 would give me g to the 6, right? That's one of the power rules. Powers to powers. h squared, right? Because the h didn't have an exponent. And then we'll have, let's see, I'll just put parentheses because parentheses imply multiplication, right? Negative 1 to the 3rd. G to the 6 again. And H to the 15, right? 2 times 3 was 6, and 5 times 3 is 15. Once again, I have factors that have the same 
um, base, right? I have negative 1 squared and negative 1 to the third. Remember, you add the powers when they have the same base, right? This would be negative 1. 2 plus 3 is 5. Let's see. It'll be g to the 6 and 6 make 12 when I add them. And then it'll be h 2 and 15 make 17, and I'm almost done. I just have to short, sort out the negative. We said an odd number of negatives leaves it negative. An even number of negatives would be positive, right? But an odd number leaves it negative. So this would be negative g to the 12, h to the 17. The negative 1 is in the problem just so I know whether my answer is negative or positive. I need to keep track of it throughout the problem. Negative signs do not play nicely with exponents because the presence of parentheses or the absence of parentheses changes the meaning of negative signs and exponents, right? We saw that on the first page. Be careful with negative signs. And notice we're using different rules in combination with each other, right? Make sure you understand these rules. It might be good to make flashcards and memorize them because we'll be using them a lot. And that brings us to the end of section 5.1. Thank you for stopping in and I will see you next time.